For years, people have talked about the proven health benefits of green tea. Now researchers at Washington University are learning more. They are proving the power of green tea, focusing on a particular compound and how it could be a life-saving discovery for people with an often fatal condition. The aroma, flavor, history, and traditions. The splendors of tea time are explored at the London Tea Room, a family business in St. Louis. For co-owner Jackie James, tea is her livelihood. I'm a World Tea Academy certified tea sommelier and tea professional. Tea is also her passion. It's definitely something I've always enjoyed. Of course, again, being British, I always have black tea. Like Jackie, many of her customers enjoy high tea for its simple pleasures. Others seek tea as a remedy, especially green tea. And people that primarily like green tea are usually here for the health benefits. Jan Bishka, assistant professor of biomedical engineering at Washington University, explains further. You figured out how the green tea works. It all has to do with the chemical compound in green tea leaves. The full name is epigallocatechin gallate. So catechins are um, a class of compound. They're also called polyphenols and they're bitter. So essentially these catechins are what makes the tea bitter. And the epigallocatechin gallate is the most common of those in the tea plant. His lab's interest in green tea is specific to patients struggling with multiple myeloma and amyloidosis who face medical complications from bone marrow diseases such as cancer. EGCG, as far as we know, don't, doesn't do anything about the underlying cancer. But the underlying cancer produces these tons of proteins that then cause additional problems and our hope is that the EGCG can help in the clearance of these proteins. This condition called light chain amyloidosis can be fatal, affecting various organs including the kidneys and heart. The biggest problem is that the light chain protein gets deposited in the heart muscle and the, the heart can actually not pump properly anymore and usually that is fatal within about six months. There are also deposits in the kidney that eventually lead to kidney failure. So the hope would be to reverse or at least halt these two complications of the light chain amyloidosis and increase the lifespan and the quality of life for these patients. Bishka says the EGCG from green tea can help. Our idea was that it may be a second line of defense it doesn't target the bone marrow cancer, obviously, but it does target the protein deposits. He explains he was part of a team that examined EGCG's effect in both Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. They found it prevented dangerous buildups of protein present in both diseases. And now he's been working with collaborators in Germany targeting light chains. Here in St. Louis, a breakthrough with an experiment to determine how the green tea compound affected the light chain protein. And that's essentially the starting point of the project that my grad student Katrin has done here, where she isolated these light chains from patients that suffer from light chain amyloidosis. The samples that Katrin uh, purified were actually collected from patients in Heidelberg at the amyloidosis center. Katrin formed fibrils in the test tube and looked at them by atomic force microscopy. So essentially what we're seeing here are these fibrillar structures and what the EGCG does now is essentially it binds to these uh, proteins in the fibril and unravels the fibril and changes its shape into something that's no longer toxic to the cells. His lab's research parallels an ongoing clinical trial with patients in Germany. Thickness of their heart muscle, which is a, is a measure of uh, how well the amyloid disease response to treatment, whether that is decreasing or not. But that's still ongoing and will, I guess, be evaluated uh, end of next year. Until more is known about dosage and safety, some may feel encouraged by the study to drink green tea. So the, the gap between the therapeutic dose and how much you would drink is not that huge. So people in uh, Asia who actually drink green tea as a staple will probably have a chance of ingesting the amounts of EGCG that we used in our uh, in vitro trials and maybe even get close to the clinical trials. 
uh, so we did a back of the envelope calculation that it's about two liters a day. Um, a, a coffee drinker like me will not get to two liters of green tea a day. I think now the dose in clinical trials is actually quite large. It's something like uh, 800 milligrams three times a day and that's, I haven't calculated how much that is, but that's probably more like five liters or so of tea. Bishka advises not to overdo it. If you're a patient on medication, he says to ask your doctor. When it comes to finding ways of drinking green tea, that's what Jackie James knows best. Green tea is kind of grassier. There's definitely um, a different flavor than black tea, so it took me a little bit of uh, getting used to. But, you know, part of that is also that you have to make green tea correctly. These are three of the favorite green teas that we have. Um, so this one is actually my personal favorite. It's a dragon well, um, which is from China. And you can kind of see uh, right here, it's kind of a pale green, um, flat leaf. Um, and it's just a very mild, buttery type of tea uh, to enjoy. You can really enjoy it with most foods. These are jasmine dragon tears, or sometimes they're called jasmine dragon pearls. And they're hand rolled, all of these. So then you can kind of see the leaves have already unfurled a little bit. It's really just a matter of people coming in and wanting to learn more about it. How do I make it correctly? How can I enjoy the taste more? Some people love the really deep green um, senches, which are Japanese teas. Um, they're kind of very savory. And we have people that love that. You know, I think if you, I always say you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it <laughs> because it's got such a deliberate taste. Since tea is a big part of her life, she follows the research about the health benefits and advises customers to avoid drinking it with milk. The experts know best. EGCG would bind to the milk protein and then much less of it gets into the body uh, than it would otherwise. If you're going to enjoy tea and use it for a health benefit, then just to drink the tea by itself. For Innovations, I'm Kathleen Berger.